Hey guys, it's Veron from Speaker of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So first things first, I'd like to apologize for a couple of, you know, a lot of background noises. Um, the birds are really noisy outside, uh, someone's watching TV in the cellar right now, and my AVR is going crazy. I think the power is fluctuating. So if you hear them clicking and like snapping in the background, that's my AVR or automatic voltage regulator for my computer. It's like going wild. So I'll try to edit the noises out as much as possible, but it really depends. Like my skill level isn't that high with audio editing, so yeah, I'll just do my best. But anyway, welcome back to my channel or video. Uh, we are doing a digital drawing today, and it was originally supposed to be a really chill and relaxing and loosening piece. But I ended up taking it too seriously, and we did this piece like four times, I think. So I did this on a live stream. I think the piece that I did before this was a character design, I think. I think. I'm not really sure. Um, so I wanted to do a more chill, drawing, portrait type of thing. And I did this four times because like, I did the sketch and the line art all in one go, in one stream. And then when I came back to it, I really hated it. Like I hated the pose or I hated how the face looks or I hated the line art or something was just wrong. So I redid it and then the cycle kept on going on for four times and then I arrived at this point where it's like, okay, I kind of like how it looks and I don't really hate the line art so I guess we're good. So this was over a couple of sessions I think. I think I started this on a holiday. So that was one day and then the next day I tried doing it again, except I hated it and then it was this entire thing. So that now that I'm looking at the raw footage, I think I wasted or I cut out something like four hours of footage because it was just me constantly erasing the canvas and redoing the entire thing. So what you're seeing right now is the final version of labor <laughs> so much so much labor and it still ended up being quite long um checking the raw well, again that's two four six six seven ar around seven hours of footage but now that they condensed it down it still ended up being almost 20 minutes so there's going to be a long video, so you might want to have this on in your background, or maybe you're drawing yourself, or maybe you're doing like chores, maybe you're cleaning your room, maybe you're washing the dishes, or doing the laundry. And I'm saying that because I do that a lot with my subscribed, or with my subscription. So I would open up, if I'm on my, on my computer, I'd open up several tabs of um, art videos that's on my subscription feed, and I would draw traditionally at least. I would draw while listening to it and I'd occasionally glance up to see what they're doing or sometimes I'm like cleaning my room or folding the laundry and I'd have it just on in the background or in front of me or when I'm doing the laundry I'd have it on my phone and just scroll through my subscribed feed and watch stuff so since it's gonna be a bit long or longer than my usual stuff I'd suggest doing something like that or just you know listen and stuff but I hope you guys enjoy anyway. So, this piece, uh, uh, actually, let's first introduce who I'm drawing. So, the character that I'm drawing is my original character. His name is Nero Evanstel Avalon. Yes, I know it sounds like Avalon. I'm a fate geek who's whatever. Um, he's an original character that was part of an entire set of characters that I did in high school. Uh, he was one of those characters that was inspired by Shonen on Yoji, which is an anime. Uh, it's pretty okay. It's typical Shonen, but I really like the concept of having uh, this human character that has guardians that can control certain elements. Nero, uh, Nero controls is a metal bender, uh, essentially. 
Uh, he can manipulate metals, he can identify metals, he can do stuff with metals. So that's his thing. And his original concept, which I sort of kept throughout the years, was that he's a bit of a prince. Well, no, he's a prince. He's a he's not a bit of a prince. He's a prince. Um, but he's the he's not a prince type. So he's a prince, but he's rather down to earth, and he likes teasing a little. He's a generally cool dude, slightly refined because of his upbringing, but that's pretty much Nilo. And he's not super super developed. Again, he's part of this entire cast that I have of characters, but I didn't really properly develop their personalities throughout the years. And I only develop them them when I start uh, role-playing them. So, I first used Nido in... Oh, it's already college, actually. So, this was during the time that Pola Magi Madoko Magica was super famous, and my friends had this... Tumblr RP going on about Maho Shonen, so magical boys, and enrolled, enrolled Neil into it just because he was the character that I was really using and I wanted to play around with him a bit more. Except I didn't really participate in the RPs of that group since I was kind of shy uh, role playing with people that wasn't my best friend and they were a bit older than me, which I didn't really mind. I was probably a year or two younger than them, but I didn't really participate much, so I just have his character art, but there was no like scenery or role plays that involved Neo in it. But yeah. And then after that, like I think two, 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 three or four years later, I used Neo again in a role play in the event art. Uh there I used him I did use him a bit more and I do have some art of him in that group, but that group became inactive sort of quickly, so he didn't get a lot of showtime. <laughs> and he wasn't my main character back then. Like I had a different character that I used more, so Nido was just there when I wanted to use somebody else. But I really like the design I came up for him for his Maho Shonen days. And I don't think I'll be redesigning it or overhauling it. But rather, when I do a redesign of Nido, it might just be like improvements and getting rid of the more unnecessary inconvenient stuff of his outfit and make it making it more sensical and logical and aesthetically aesthetically pleasing. So the base of his outfit's gonna be the same but his little accessories and cape and stuff might change a little bit. So this piece has a couple of flaws. It's not those it's not one of those drawings where I could see that I'm extremely proud of it because Chase, the one that I did a couple of a month or two ago, I think, uh, those are one of those pieces where I'm just like super proud of it and I really pushed my boundaries. This was supposed to be a chill piece so I, I it is a chill piece that I took somewhat seriously in the end but it's not like a boundary pushing piece except it does have some flaws. For example, his face looks a bit too young. It, it's his proportions and his face are really big, so it makes him look a bit more feminine that, than what I would want to, but I guess it's fine. Um, the other thing is his hand, his right hand, the one that's down, that's in sort of the background of sorts, it's a little bit small compared to his other hand. Uh, the proportions are wrong, and yeah, I just couldn't properly figure out how to change it or how to fix it to make it look better. And because I was already sort of tired of working on this piece, I didn't really bother to spend a lot more time trying to fix it. Another thing is with the shadows. It's a little bit too saturated with color. Usually I would use a bit duller tones to create my shadows, but I don't know what was with me that day and I used like this really bright orangey color to be to be the shadow, but it still turned out okay, I guess. Like he has a slight natural glow, but it's fine, I guess. I think I'm at that point again. Okay, let me explain. Um, when I was a lot, lot younger, think grade school, middle school, high school. Uh, so I was pretty much self-taught for most of my life. And when I was drawing, which is, again, just anime stuff, I would have these jumps of progress 
without really working hard to do it. So, for example, I'd stick to this plan and these proportions for several months, and suddenly, like one day, it's gonna be different and it's gonna be better. And suddenly, I understand a bit, a couple of more things better, and things look way better than it's like a hundred percent better than what they used to be. And that's what's weird about it is that it's not the type. I'm not the type of artist where I would like persistently work on, say, the background and then suddenly then be like, oh, here, here's my background from three months ago. I drew backgrounds every day and you can see the progression to something that I do now, which is 100, 1,000 times better. No, I'm not that kind of artist. Um, it seems to be that I'm the kind of artist that's like, oh, I suck at hands one day and then suddenly the next day I draw hands a lot better. And that's really weird because I wasn't really putting much um, effort into it, but somehow I managed to fix that problem. So I was like that for the longest time um, until I got to college. Because I hit a plateau at one point, I think around high school and college. I guess because I was busy and I wasn't drawing as much. I hit a plateau in my style and my improvement, so I was like that, so I didn't really mind. And then I went into a Really? No, why is there a vacuum cleaner? <laughs> no. Anyway, please ignore that if you can. <laughs> so, I went into a fine arts course uh, for two years. I did graduate, don't worry. It's just because I had a course before that, which I finished. So, I might just condense all of the course subjects into that. So, whatever. But that fine arts course was a design course. It's information design, so it was graphic design. So it wasn't really hardcore on painting or the traditional fine arts. But I did learn some stuff from the two classes I took that was focused on traditional fine arts, which was sketching and drawing, and the other one was on painting. So that was watercolor, acrylics and oils, and oil pastels. So I did learn a couple of stuff there, and that's the only time that I saw myself improving per piece. Like, I would see the improvements and how I changed it, and I understood how I changed it per piece because I was forced to draw nearly every other day, I think. So I had to pass something almost every other day, so I would really literally see the progress, and I never experienced that like sudden jump in progress type of thing. But now that I graduated from that course and I'm once again on my own and learning on my own again, I'm having those moments again where it's just like I'm like at level 3 today and suddenly tomorrow I'm at level 5. And I would know that I'm at that state again because I look at my drawings like this and I see all the problems or I know that there's something wrong. But I don't 100% understand what's wrong. I just know that there's something wrong. And how do I put this? I don't always see the problems while I'm drawing. So that's not super uncommon. But like some artists, they notice right away. Like, oh, hey, the proportion for this hand is wrong. So I can adjust it while I'm drawing. Me, sometimes I'd see the problem like days after or hours after. And it's frustrating. But it's also a good sign that I know that I'm about to improve soon, hopefully. And I don't know. Um, I should just leave that in the comments below. Like, is that something you also experience? Like that sudden jump in progression and you don't even know how you got to that progress, I guess? Or are you the type of artist that you know where you're going, how you got there, and you can see it in your drawings every day or every week or how often you draw that you saw that slow change or are you like like me that like that fast snap change type of person it's just interesting because like, i don't know anyone else that does this and i'm pretty sure i'm not the only one who experiences this but leave that in the comments below i'd like to hear your experiences i guess but yeah it's just interesting because I think I'm at that point again where something's gonna change. But the thing is, I don't know what's gonna change. <laughs> change is coming, but I really don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Now 
One thing though that has changed a lot since I was a kid is that I've gotten really good at drawing hair and I've gotten really good at um, sort of creating folds and clothes. Uh, I think I'll do a... I might... Because I see a lot of YouTube artists doing it recently. Like they would look at their old drawings and then, you know, sort of react to it. So, sort of like a sketchbook tour but it's just their old drawings. So, I have a ton of sketchbooks here from when I was in high school and I think I have my middle school stuff here as well. But actually they're super accessible right now. I can just flip through all of them. Their pages are super yellow now but I might do that sometime and be happy of how far I've come I guess. But yeah, I might do that. Because it's really fun watching all those videos and watching people react to their old drawings and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that as well, also let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Um, I really enjoy those and I'd probably do it anyway, but if you tell me you want to see it, I might bump it up earlier in the schedule of stuff that I want to put out for my channel, so that's that. <laughs> so this is actually one of the rare, rare times where I'm able to pretty much talk through the entire video. Usually, I have a hard time with any video that's beyond 15 minutes because at 15 minutes i'm already either running out of breath or i'm running out of topics and that's something i've been trying to improve i'm trying to improve the speed of how i talk because even in real life i notice that i tend to trip on my words a lot because my brain is um my brain's processing a lot faster than what my mouth can handle so sometimes i would chip on certain syllables or certain words because I want to get the next word out and it just, I become a mess. So I've been trying to sort of pace myself a bit more and, you know, try to talk better. Now you turn off the vacuum. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> well, they don't know I'm recording, but now I have that vacuum sound in my audio. It's so frustrating. So now I'm gonna over. Oh no, I'm wrong. Um, so I'm adding like uh, a glow type of thing just to make it more vibrant. And then for the cloth in the background, I will put a, I believe, a multiply layer that would make it darker so that it, it would fade a bit more in the background and let things shine a bit more, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I've been more open to layer styles and techniques recently especially since i use them a lot at work and i see how convenient they are and it can achieve things that would take me pretty much forever to do if i try to do it through normal just brush and blending means so i should have learned that earlier <laughs> i had no clue what to do with the background so I thought like, hey, let's do those sort of starry, stroby, high exposure type backgrounds where it's like, you know those photos where it's high exposure and like you'd see the stars in the world turning? That was the concept for this. Just because like, it had no, um, I had no background in mind. Phew, I still, my throat's still a little, bit, a little bit sore for talking for 20 minutes, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, like this video if you enjoyed this this video, <laughs> and uh, subscribe if you want to see more anime, fan art, digital, traditional art on my channel. I do those really so much, and I hope you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Deviant Art. My voice is tired, and I'll see you around. <laughs>